Hey guys, it's Jason. And I haven't been around for the last six months, so that means I haven't been able to give you guys Bitcoin statistics, averages, and hash rate numbers. And so I've got a lot of emails over this last six months, and I've actually myself been kind of surprised. I got on Bitcoin charts a few days ago to you know look up some statistics, because I usually only do about a month, every once a month here recently, and it blew me away. We're at 94 petahashes. 94 petahashes is a huge number. And a lot of people that you know are just getting into Bitcoin or have in the last six months, or maybe the last 12 months are like, oh, you know, that's not that big a deal. But to someone like me who's been in Bitcoin for, wow, multiple years now, it's incredible. I want to give you guys some um, points on a timeline to kind of let you comprehend how big a deal this is. Last year, this time, we were at 100 terahashes. That's one-tenth of a petahash. Again, we're now at 94 petahashes. So the hardware has just exponentially been developed. January 1st, 2014, so roughly about five and a half months ago, we were at 10 petahashes. So just in five and a half months, we have, we have oh my gosh, about nine, time, nine and a half times our hash rate. This is crazy. You know, this is unheard of in Bitcoin. Now, of course, we've, we've talked about exponential price increases for, you know, the price differentials. So, you know, if you're buying Bitcoin, you know, three years ago, it was a lot cheaper than if you're buying it today. So exponential increase. And we've seen that in hardware, but it never before like this. We haven't seen it exponentially increase. Well, the very essence of exponential is that it keeps getting faster and faster, increases. So, you know, it's kind of like, um, for instance, math. Let's, let's compare it to math. You know, 2 to the 2nd power, 2 to the 8th power, 2 to the 29th power, 2 to the 100th power are exponentially differentials. They're farther apart. So 2 to the 2nd power versus 2 to the 4th power versus two to the hundredth power, you know, there's a big difference. And um, the same way is with hash rates. We're exponentially increasing because hardware is getting better. We went from, you know, now we're down, I don't even know where we're at now. I know a few months ago we were at 28 nanobor nanometer, 28 nanometer boards or chipsets. And that's, you know, crazy to think about. But it just, it, you know, last year I remember talking about, and I actually went back and watched some of my videos so I could give a very accurate description. I was talking about last year how I didn't think we'd hit, I was, I was predicting that I hoped we would, but I was talking about how I was kind of questionable whether we'd hit one pound of hash before the end of the year. Now, of course, that was in June of last year, so that was a six-year or six-month prediction, which actually happened to be true. We actually hit like two or three pound of hashes before the year was over, um, and that was pretty incredible. Actually, because January 1st, we had 10 pound of hashes. We, we actually did pretty well, we, um, and my predictions were a lot more crazier than some people's. A lot of people were a lot more conservative, and... I kind of went out there and said, I think we're going to hit a petahash, and by golly, we had 10 petahashes last year. And so halfway through, we're at 94 petahashes. A lot of people are asking, you know, what is next? And I can tell you, you know, what's next? We're going to keep exponentially increasing our hash rate. One issue that people keep asking me about, and I, I see the concern. They say, Jason, you know, Bitcoin's always been about a decentralized model, that everybody contributes to the network um, no matter if you're rich or poor, you know, you can, you know, get a GPU and provide for the network. And it's kind of, a lot of people say, you know, in the last year, last year and a half, that's kind of went away. And so is Bitcoin fading into, you know, corporate greed and, you know, more of a centralized model? You know, and I've actually questioned this myself a lot. And so I want to divulge in this conversation for a few minutes. Back when I got into Bitcoin, you could get a GPU or use your GPU and you could mine it Suspension. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll spare you my language. A lot of coins. You could. Mind, I mean, back in the day when I first got involved, using your CPU could get you could yield a lot of coins. But over the time, you know, we talked about last year multiple times. When is GPU mining going to become inefficient? Because obviously, CPU mining become became inefficient to Bitcoin. Well, GPU mining has been long inefficient. We talked about FPGA boards. They're long inefficient. You know, this don't make sense to run. Everything is ASIC boards now. Um, and so people say, well, you know, I'm an individual. I have a few hundred dollars. What do I do investment-wise? And I always talk about, I don't want to you know, tell people how to invest or where to invest. But one of the issues I run into is people want to go out and buy boards. They want to be a miner. And I've told people countless times that back in, you know, last year, I said, you know, unless you have $8,000, $10,000 to invest, um, don't invest in mining for, for ASIC coins. And people ask, well, I want to be part of the network. Well, you really don't right now because you, you can be part of the network. You can buy Bitcoins, 
But if you have less than ten thousand dollars, or and now it's probably less than you know seventy, eighty, ninety, a hundred thousand dollars, maybe, you're not going to be a large portion of the network. And the, discussing you know exponential increases in hash rate, if you buy a board, one board, and say that board, you know, for instance, we just talked about in the last video uh, the the BE two hundred chip series, and they're coming out, ASIC miners coming out with a new um, type of mining unit, and it will ha mine seven hundred and sixty eight giga hashes. Well, that's fine. But when we talk about mining, you usually make your most money in the first three months because that three months, and assuming you get, you know you buy your board and you get within the next 14 days, is when you do the calculations and the calculations make sense. But you know, for instance, when a company buys a product, uh, and one thing that always interests me, I, I love uh, webcams. I always loved looking up into um, how you buy webcams and stuff back in the day when I was getting into Bitcoin. And uh, one of the things that I always looked at is price, you know, differentials. So a company might buy a product for fifty dollars. They retail it um, for a hundred dollars. And you know, I took accounting classes, and so essentially, what you do is the time you buy it, it's worth a hundred dollars. You know, because that's what everyone else is selling it on the market for. But a year later, you know, it's only worth seventy-five dollars. So you have to show in your records that it's now only worth seventy-five dollars. So you can't say, well, I have a product that were, that's I have ten products worth a hundred dollars. So therefore, I have a thousand dollars in per potential profit. You don't have that. You have a product worth seventy-five dollars. So you have ten products worth seventy-five dollars. You kind of see what's what's going on right there. Well, the same thing is true for Bitcoin and miners. Yeah, you can buy a miner, and yeah, in the next three months, it's going to be very efficient. But as you know, more devices come out, as people become more efficient with mining, that efficiency rate goes down. Suddenly, your mining power um, or your percent of the total network which is like what I like to compare stuff to, goes down dramatically. Um, I, I've talked about before on my podcast, on videos, you know, literally people that um, back in the day made a lot of money on buying Bitcoins have went out and made huge, huge data centers. Um, one is in um, Switzerland, and it's incredible. I mean, it, he has like 7% of the, uh, well, bet he did about four months ago. I don't know what he has now. But he has like four, like, he had like 7% of the network you know, in this center, and it was using the you know the winter air to cool the servers and everything. Well, obviously that guy, you know, the larger you get, the better and the more competitive you can be. So he's able to buy in bulk, get a discount on the boards. He's able to buy you know air conditioners and discount, or in that case, you know, air intake systems. And so when you buy things in huge bulk, you can buy it cheaper. So that's what this guy was. You know, that's why it's easier. So. You know, last year I said ten thousand dollars. Now I'm saying you know seventy to hundred thousand dollars. If you don't have that to invest, don't get into mining, at least for ASIC coins. And I, I know people are gonna get mad at me because they're gonna say, well, Jason, I can go out and buy this device for five grand dollars. You know, not five grand dollars, five thousand dollars. I can go out and buy this device for twenty five hundred dollars. You could, and you might be lucky to make your money back. You might in the next two or three months make your money back. But I'm trying to be that sound voice in your head, trying to tell you what's the best decision to do. And currently, getting into mining is very, very risky. Um, I used to talk about back in the day, and this is still true for a little bit for script coins. You can go out and buy a computer, you know, set up four GPUs in it, and guess what? If the coin goes bad, or if that device becomes unminable because you know obviously the profitability goes down below electricity profits, because obviously you know you're taking out the cost for electricity, and then the profit over that is your total profit. Well, if, if that goes below what you're, you're paying in electricity, then you don't run the device. And I've talked about, well, worst case scenario, you can take that device, you can sell the GP, three of those GPUs and have a free computer, essentially, if you paid it off with the mining, or you can just sell the entire device and make you know 80% back. But when you buy ASIC boards, you can't do that because they are literally designed, um, applications, I forget what ASIC stands for, it's like application specific. So it's designed just for that process. And so these boards are designed just to mine Bitcoin. And so when they become less profitable, you can't sell them to anyone. You know, they're not going to be able to sell them. They're, they're, they're worth zero dollars when they become unminable because the electricity costs too much to run. And that's why I warned so many people. You know, I've talked to people countless times, even on Bitcoin Talk, and I thought I had them. I thought I explained to them, and then they go out and they buy these devices. And, and then they, tech, you know, they email, not text me, <laughs> they email me or message me, you know, four months later and say, I'm not making any money. Well, this is the reason. Because the profitability is exponentially decreasing while the hash rate is exponentially increasing. I know I kind of went on a tangent there, but it's something I'm passionate about because I don't want to see you waste money. You know, I don't want to see you take your hard-earned money that I know all of these people work for and waste it. 
I want to see you, you know, do your own, again, like I always say, do your own research, because you might disagree with me, and that's perfectly fine, but, um, I really hope you enjoyed, I hope I explained that, you know, we are at 94 petahashes, woohoo, so, have a great day, thanks for watching.